Welcome back, everybody, to the During Business Hours podcast. It's today in the middle of the day, and I'm feeling a little dehydrated. So I got my water, my hydration expert therapist, here today on the podcast to give us some exciting information. You know, m- Mama said that alligators are so ornery because they got all them teeth and no toothbrush. And you know, in 1776, I mean, 1996, the pickup sticks. <laughs> I, I used to watch Waterboy after school all the time when I was a kid. I, th- I think I saw a clip where Jennifer Lawrence was interviewing uh, Adam Sandler, said the exact same thing. And I was Seriously? like, the exact same thing. I was like, Jesus, Jennifer. Um, I thought I was a weird kid because I loved Adam Sandler and Robin Williams so much. Like, I thought Robin Williams was my dad and Adam Sandler was like that weird cousin. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was just stuck to the TV, like the camo man, you know? Or what was it, the cable guy? I mean, they are. Steven? Is that the. Steven? I just, I just want to be friends. Steven? God. Cable guy. You know, with everything that you do here, you could. Oh, man, dude, next Halloween, you should go as a cable guy. I could. I was going to print out a big, uh, what was it, Buzz Lightyear costume and do all this shit, and then I had no time, and I'm starting to realize with the kids I have no time. Cause I just do too much. I have three businesses I run physical. That's nuts. Yeah. And now I've got a new consultation gig. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It was yeah. A, an interesting one. So I was uh, enlightening Alex here to the, the history of my consultation repertoire for electronics repair shops. Some of you who watch this podcast know that I've con- consulted or given you advice in some way or another. Drop a comment if you're one of those people. Tell me how I ruined your fucking life. If I didn't, then glad you're here. But if it's one of those things where somebody is desperate to build their business, build their brand, I've got options where I can help you in certain ways that I helped myself to grow certain brands. It's easier for small town, local places to to get more customers. You just have to know the right pockets to to put things into. The problem is these people have never heard of the internet, never heard of Google. They don't know what SEO is or map targeting or clicks or trying to get them to even know what Google ads is, is a fucking nightmare. So, so many people like Rich next door didn't know what Google was and how to work SEO. When I first moved here, I helped him with that. But um, fucking Jeremy was next door. I had this guy, one of my first clients that I had done a consultation gig for, I drove out to Monterey, which was like three hours from my house. He paid me 1500 bucks to stay there for a week. I was like, okay, that's really low. I make about seven grand a week. Uh, I'll do three days and then I'll, you know, come back. It's 500 bucks a day and I'll help. Cool. And he was like, well, if it boosts business, I'll give you some more money. All right, great, great deal. There are three days. It's like, you got to stay for more. All right, we'll do 2,500 bucks. I'm like, I'll give you another day for another thousand bucks. It turned into one of those things where he bought me a a hotel room and sent me sleeping in my brand new Tesla, which was fine. I was like, all right, cool. I still ended up driving home at night. I was like, yeah, my kid was just born. I'm not going to miss that. Right. And he got pissed off that I drove home and then was late to the opening of the store the next morning because he got stuck in traffic by 45 minutes. He's like, oh, I'm going to deduct that from your pay. I'm like, there's your fucking problem. You think that you're going to lose 45 minutes of me and and deserve some cash back versus the work I'm putting in in the day on a, a temp job. You know what I mean? So he didn't see a result immediately. But he kept coming back and asking for more info, more money, more things. How can we do this? I was like, all right, well, how about this? Give me a piece of your business and I'll invest my time into it. Like you want me to invest my time into it. Otherwise, it's just not there for me. and You can't pay me enough. Mm -hmm. I I make too much. I think at that time I was making like almost 15 grand a week. It was was a good time. I was like, all right, pay me either $10,000 and I'll work for a full week on your business, show you everything that I know. Or B, you give me, I think it was four, uh, 50% of the revenue and 25% ownership. And then he had an option to cancel the contract, pay me out a $25,000 fee if I had spent months on this. And I think it was 30-day notice, and he could just pay my time at $7,500. Uh, well, he executed his contract after like three months and then wanting to pay me out twenty five grand, But he's like, no, I'm not going to pay you. So I ended up, Steve, sued him, ended up getting the business in full. Thank you. That Monterey store is amazing. Um, but it was definitely one of those things where some people don't want to put up. They, they're, they just, they're fed up and to a point where I think this lady is, where she's now asking for help because they're so prideful that they have gone so long without going, I don't know what I'm doing. I need to find somebody who knows this. 
that they're like pissed off at the world when they have to put in more money. You know what I mean? It's Northwest Oklahoma. It's small towns. Like it's gonna be that kind of thing where they're not gonna ask for help until the point of like fuck the it. Pressure. Like we need we need help. It's I mean it's like the same thing for for medicine out here. Like oh well, we know why your your thing is doing it. Well, not just like my thing, but like on the ambulance, like uh older like farmers mm. they're not gonna call 911 unless they're dying or dead well, that's a lot of men in general a funny story on the not wanting to call as a man my wife was asking the other day she's like what would it take for you to go to the hospital you know because i had a, a health scare recently and i was like i thought i was going to stand in that office and die on my feet i just straight up thought i was going to die Okay, uh, what am I going to do? Nothing. I'm going to work. There's nothing I can do. I'm not going to drive two hours to the hospital. And I'm, I'll wait it out, see what happens. I had a gut wrenching pain. Like, I've never felt this pain before. And I was probably passing gas that I've never passed through a place I've never had pressure before. Right. But it felt like, you ever seen those Minecraft things from not, you know, Minecraft the game on uh, the realms and stuff, <laughs> but Minecraft the actual game on PC Windows 98? The little spiky balls that explode. Imagine you... Well, you never saw Minecraft? Not those spiky ball things. Mines is mines? the game. Yeah, on PC. Oh, okay. Mines. Those I was going to say, like, yeah. Minecraft? Yeah, so Mines on PC. It felt like I had swallowed one of those. And it was in my chest. And then it kept moving down my stomach. And it was just in here stuck. And it was... Just, boom, yeah, boom. yeah, you could feel the heartbeat. I was like, I swallowed a bomb. I'm going to die. I didn't tell my wife till the next day. And so when I explained it to her, she was like, what the fuck? Why didn't you go to the hospital? No. Like, I'm going to die on my feet here. And she was like, I would have done X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah, men just don't care. The next day, I was like, yeah, life's normal. Everything's happy. But we just don't treat ourselves well. Right. Yeah. And that's like doubled for out here for men. And same for for women out here, too. My, uh, she also mentioned, she was like, the man cold is real. Women get a cold. They go days without, you know, saying a thing. They work on their feet. They just power through it. And I'm like, this is where one of those things where you're you're telling me that you're going through something that's so mundane yet normal because I could power through a cold every day. And she's like, well, you when you have a cold, you're really, you have a cold and you're out and you're like, oh, I can't move. I can't do that. And I'm like, no. I've had two colds in our marriage that were like that, and I had 104 temperature both times. One was like 103 something, one was 104. Both times I was delirious because of the fever. Right. And you're going to tell me this is like some man cold? Oh, I can't. I don't want to go to work. <laughs> like, I work seven days a week when we got married. I worked the day after our wedding. All kinds of shit. Like, it was from our honeymoon. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I worked. I never stopped working. You're going to tell me that I'm, I'm susceptible to this so-called man cold on TikTok? Try me. Give me the rhinovirus right now. We'll see who, like me and my <laughs> wife, who's in bed first. She's going to be like, <sighs> I'm going to be like, I oh, need something. <clears throat> I'm going to work. That's usually what happens. But w- with the SEO stuff, most of the people here, it's the end of their, their lifespan that they want to push for that. So she came in. She owns a hotel, a liquor store, and she runs uh, as like a hospice nurse. So she works nights as like a hospice nurse for crazy people. And I mean crazy. So I met her yesterday when somebody had smashed, like beaten her up, smashed her phone, her laptop, everything. We fixed it all, gotten it handled, saved her a bunch of money from going to Walmart. And then we were discussing uh, what she uses it for, Square, that we use Square on all of our locations. I know, get off my dick, Square is expensive. But I've negotiated a great rate with Square because of my processing and what I spend with them. So if you spend over or get transacted over like 15000 a month, they'll renegotiate that 3%. So I spend closer to 2% with no 30% or no 30 cent fee. Great for me. So, uh, one of my locations is 1.2% because that's like 30K a month instead of 15000 a month. And so when I told her that, she was like, oh, my gosh, you can do this. You can set me up with this. So I helped her a little bit yesterday. Today she comes back with a fictitious issue. issue. No problem. Oh, my phone's overheating. And also, can I ask you a, like, really insecure question that I shouldn't ask you and I know you're busy? 
And then it turned into an hour long conversation. And then she's like, well, how much would it cost to consult? And I'm like, I used to charge $1,500 for a day. So out here, I'd say 500 bucks. I know she can't just drop $1,500 in my pocket for me to go and tell her what she's doing wrong. Right. Because that's what the first day always is. You could have done this. You didn't do that. You could have done this. You could have done that. Yeah. So I say 500 bucks. That'll be uh, four hours. That's what I told her. Four hours, not including travel time. I'll go out there, spend four hours, tell you everything that I would do in your stead, how to do it, where to get the resources. Because I'm not going to gatekeep like, and a lot of people do this where they get somebody who's really good at something and they keep them to themselves. So like they'll get an editor or they'll get uh, somebody that does flagging or posting or like social media stuff and they keep them in their pocket. And they're like, nobody else needs to know about this person. They do a great job. Even though the person most of the time is like, oh, yeah, refer me to your business partners, your clients, your people. All of them do that, but people don't refer them. I don't know why. Right. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to send her everyone that I've used for, like, flagging fucking uh, false reviews and shit like that. Like, let's go. Let's get SEO targeting on the map. Let's get you with some keyword generation. Fun stuff. But uh, it's in her court if she wants to get it done or not. Yeah. I don't know if she will. Because apparently she closes her liquor store and only opens when the the hotel is open, which is weird. And then she's only on like Airbnb, travel, booking.com. And because she's got a 3.0 rating, I guess she said her son was a YouTuber, right? I, I didn't catch that part. Yeah, so her son was on social media and he got a bunch of trolls to go after her business on accident. So she was very upset. I straight told her to use mushrooms, become happy. You know, get a little happiness in your life. Was that the millionaire son? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Apparently he was on YouTube or social media and now he's just fucking around. I can't tell if her shit is crazy or just deluded. I mean, if that's the case, sounds like he's living his best life, honestly. But Talking about uh, moving my parents out here. They're, uh, They're struggling in California like everybody is. But boy, it's getting hard. Because now that it's cold and we're going out there this weekend, so I'll visit them. And we're going to do a, instead of a big camera vlog set up, because we got both kids this time, it's going to be straight from the phone. So be on the lookout for that on Christopher Loves Life. New TikTok and Patreon is out. And our shorts channel is now going as of today. Nice. Got a new person. Miss Khan is handling most of that business for me, which should be... Interesting. Have you looked into any of the contract? Oh, we, we talked about uh, contracts after the podcast last night. Yeah. You want to tell them? Yeah. You freaking called Mercy Hospital and was like, hey, was it accounts payable? It was like. We you- had no idea what the name was. It yeah. was a place to get him in his foot in the door with the hospitals or local hospitals. I have no idea. I'm not a medical personnel, personnel or person. And I was telling him, I was like. If I didn't know this, I would probably just call a hospital and then pretend like I knew this to get a hold of somebody who knows the information I want. And I think we got somebody, we got three different names of three different heads of this department. Yeah. The Friggin phone. like, hey, you, you were like, yeah, my name's Alex Martinez. I'm like, oh, yeah, if this ever goes anywhere, they're going to be like, you sound different. <clears throat> I had a cold. Yeah. yeah. A man had, cold. A man cold. Yeah. God. No, yeah. Um <laughs> Which, the more I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, you know, that wouldn't be bad. But the the other thing that would be hard for that is, like, the insurance-wise. And, like, there are some physicians out here, like one of the ones I was telling you about earlier, Mm -hmm. that they they were paid, like, a monthly fee, and they don't take insurance. At all. At all. Because they they get that monthly payment, and that covers, like, their their what is it, the premium or, or the, um, they get that monthly payment and their their patients are, are covered in terms of like, well, you know, now they can set up an appointment, you know, if they need medications, you know, they, they get that initial cost covered and then whatever else they have to pay, they're going to pay it. So I know third parties can bill insurance, but they have to be or have a rapport, you know? And yeah. Then, so why can't you get that rapport? Because then insurance gets all – insurance is a sticky situation when it comes to – What's billable, what's not billable. Yeah. And, like, some people 100% – 
require fluids mm-hmm. because of issues that they might have of like uh, like low blood pressure. Maybe they are chronically dehydrated. Maybe they're going through some treatments that, that cause them to be dehydrated. All these different diseases and things that are incorporated into it. And then you get the other people that I service, which are those that uh, maybe have a rough weekend at the bar. And they're like... I just called this guy. Sorry to you know, interrupt, but that is one of our newly autistic customers. Uh, he openly said he was autistic and that he uses that watch for certain things that he likes to do. And I called him five minutes ago and told him, here's what's wrong with it. Here's what we're going to do. And now he's here asking, what's wrong with it? What are you going to do? Autism. So the billing, right? Yeah. So it's a pain in the ass. I know there are people who do the billing and they're able to bill through insurance, like portable dentists, right? Mm -hmm. They can, you know, go through and give people lidocaine, do all their shit, handle it mobile, so to speak. But there's also those people that aren't actually licensed dentists that go through and just handle the pain management and then get a script through a third-party doctor and then have that filled by the person on their own time. Yeah. So why can't you be like that person? I'd have to see what the rules and regulations are in Oklahoma because every place is a little bit different. That's why, like, Hydrate, what they're doing now, like they're doing blanket protocols for us. So in other states that are more restrictive when it comes to like compounding medications in a bag, they're they're saying we can't do that anymore. My wife used to work at a compound pharmacy and she would tell me how she made drugs. It's a, such a crazy thing that they would like store cocaine and store fentanyl and all these like different things to make different drugs and how she would like divvy up all that shit is nuts Mm -hmm. yeah and what's even more dumb is that uh hydrate the laws that they're or the regulations that they're like putting us on it doesn't even apply to service providers it applies to pharmacies but they're but they're making it like a blanket like like a blanket it like it doesn't matter like even though it applies to just the pharmacies when it comes to like compounding these medications, they're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. We're just going to go ahead and divvy that up to the entire nationwide thing of people that they give all these vitamins and stuff. So unlike Oklahoma, who is more relaxed when it comes to that stuff. And when I say relaxed, it's just because Oklahoma hasn't like caught up with a bunch of things like other states have. Yeah. Um, it makes it easier to, to do things like that. When in reality, like we don't do any compounding, it's all the pharmacies. But there's gotta be something. Cause it's, hypothetically you shut down your IV business tomorrow mm-hmm. and you're not getting paramedic work or you're not getting medic work. Well, what do you do? Probably work under my nursing license. No, what, what does that look like? Just go work for a hospital or a clinic or something. Yeah. So what what under a nursing license can you do other than that? There's got to be, like, a nursing license isn't only for working for hospitals, right? I mean, hospice, home health, nursing homes. That's one of those things that you would assume you could go door to door. There's There's got to be a list of people that are in hospice or in, like, IHSS situations, if anybody knows what that is, home health service. Uh, that would need fluids on the regular, that need more than the care they're getting provided, there's got to be a cold call sheet somewhere that data, I know HIPAA and all that, but I'm saying there's somewhere that those people have elected to forego that and it's sitting on somebody's desk in one of these hospitals. That's why I figured call and get that, like, okay, well, these people don't have insurance and they would like care and sure, you are cheaper than the insurance route yeah. if they don't have insurance. So like today... I'm getting an IV because I'm going on a flight. Da, 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 da. The, the other dumb thing is uh, home health around here and hospice, they aren't allowed to give fluids. What? Yeah. That's a dumb thing I found out, what which, the, which so doesn't make any sense because they can give steroids, so they can give... Shots. But I those mean, are all succutaneous, right? Like, they, they have to be just in the fat. I mean, yeah. I mean, not, not all of them. Some of them can do can be like IVs, so they can start like IV antibiotics and steroids and stuff, but they can't do just straight fluids, which the, seems. What's the difference then? 
you're telling me I have absolutely no idea. That's the medical field. They have to have a reason and then some form of case or litigation that's tied to that reason for you not doing something. I'm sure when it boils down to it, it just comes up to medical director wise. There's got to be some kind of thing involved with uh, home health. Yeah, there's got to be a way you get your foot in the door there. I mean, I've gone there and I've given them like my business cards information. And I've gotten patients from them. Yeah, um, like a one day thing, right? Yeah, it's or, typically it'll be tomorrow morning. You know, tomorrow with the morning. time. Yeah, uh, we'll give her a call as soon as it's done. So it's it's one of those things. Uh, we're talking about a board wash that somebody dropped liquid on their device and it was all sticky. That's what I got on my hands. Hand sanitizer, unlike the uh, the Oculus moment. But <laughs> an Oculus customer comes in from our last podcast episode and decides, well, now the kid's been bad. I'll pick it up when his grounding is done. Okay, how long is the grounding? Well, it'll be off grounding in three months. Uh, ma'am, I don't hold on to devices that long. Well, sell it. What? fine that's fine but it's tied to your facebook account so I, i'd have to access his face, facebook oh no we'll be in tomorrow to pick it up damn holding on hold on to it for three months yeah you want me to hold on to your oculus quest 2 which is four years old you know model that i can sell for 180 bucks it's and fun then, times and then you're like it's connected to the facebook just like oh yeah they, they don't want me to have the access to the mom's facebook you want to get that iv started yeah i didn't know what you needed oh i just need your arm yeah, let me see that arm. 72 hours. I'll be on a flight. So I'm hoping this lasts long enough. The vitamins for sure. Yeah. Fluid, just keep on drinking that water. It's going to just help it last longer. I've been trying. Now, what were we talking about? The IV. Give me some info on why this is so good for you. Because I'm here. No, Because you see me. So no. in, in all seriousness, why is getting an IV like this good for the human body? Like, I don't know that. I mean, everybody in general is at some level of dehydration, right? Mm. Nobody, unless some people are consistent with, you know, how often they drink water. But the other thing is, like, how often do they drink the right water? Not like the Dasani's or the Great Value. The water that actually matters. There was a guy who did, like, an alkaline test on everything or a, a chemical pH test on them. I bought a bunch of pH testers. God, we should do that to water. Yeah, where it shows like how acidic the yeah. Dasani is. I'm gonna do that for a short. Yeah. Yeah. But like. I'm gonna do that today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right after this, I'm gonna <laughs> buy a bunch of waters and we're gonna <laughs> test the pH. That'll be on the vlog channel. Cause I need, I, yeah, there's all kinds of shit we got to do for the the Patreon and make like specific content and stuff. I got some ideas for that. Like the woodworking is gonna be strictly Patreon based. If people want to see how I made it, how I did it, cause I got those six. 12 foot boards of cedar that are almost two and a half inches thick i'm mm-hmm. gonna make some baller live edge uh, benches nice yeah especially because like out here if i put those for people to sit on the kids and whatnot phew, parents are gonna be like yeah 200 bucks fuck yeah right 100 bucks fuck yeah 100 percent. where's the taste of fucking cereal like dry wheat come from in your mouth uh that's the b vitamins tastes like flintstone vitamins like the chalky ones what is b12 made from B12. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like four different kinds of B12. Um, there's a cyanocobalamin, there's a hydroxycobalamin, and then the two high grade ones are the methylcobalamin and the, uh, I'm probably not even going to say it right, ad- adenylocobalamin. Yeah. And one of those, I want to say like maybe the hydroxo or the cyanocobalamin are like man made B12. And I'm wondering if those are made from wheat because I swear I, I taste wheat. In my mouth. Well, what you'd be tasting is the B vitamins, the B1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. And those are like naturally found occurring vitamins in... In wheat, okay. Such as thiamine. So I'm tasting B vitamins in wheat. Water certainly play an important role in metabolism, particularly in metabolism. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, riboflavin, primary oxide. Mm-hmm. Huh. Animal proteins, dairy products, leafy green vegetables, and beans. Beans, then. Now I taste it. That's crazy. I didn't. I don't know why I made that connection. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, at first, yeah, the first time I got it, tasted like uh, the vitamins. And then it was, boom, the last time, like iron, yeah, like blood. Mm-hmm. And it was, yeah. Could you imagine sucking down alcohol-based whippets and how bad that would be? Oh, 100%. Did you, did you do whippets as a kid? No. No, never? No, never. Have you done any drugs? 
I know this is a business podcast. I'm sorry, kids, but I mean some weed. That's it. Yeah. Never coke. Never shrooms. Acid. LSD. Nope. Methamphetamines. Nope. Nope. Not even uh, yeah. triple C. I don't even know what that is. It's cold cough, corsetin, like uh, over the counter meds. Mm-hmm. Nothing. No. You live a sheltered life. I know why you go to the bar now. God. Yeah. It's, I used to fuck around with kids in high school, and everyone would do whippets. They'd do triple C's, ecstasy, and then it, as it progressed, it became like parties, cocaine, the occasional pill popping, Xanax, and then I broke a bone, and my mom's like, here, take some Vicodin. And I was like, oh, that felt great. Let me go to the doctor and ask. Well, here's some Vicodin. They gave me way too much. The fucking pill popping scene in America is strictly because of doctors. So I got a customer. I'm going to tell his story. He's being hacked by his ex-wife. His iCloud info got changed. And then she remotely locked his phone and erased it. So then he needed to update and restore. Do not give your wives, even ex-wives, current wives, girlfriends, the love of your life, the keys to your social media kingdom or your, your emails and things like that. There's no reason any woman should ever have that because women can be vengeful. Even my wife, I'm sure, can be vengeful. Hasn't been, but she, I'm sure she has the capability. There's no reason why I should ever give her my email and like access to those things in full control because if that shit happened to me, I'd have two weeks of time where I could not make half the money I make. Mm hmm. Because I wouldn't have access to my email, my data, my WhatsApp. All of it would be locked out. Deadly. Deadly. So he breaks his phone in a fight with his girlfriend. Cool. Goes by as another. Logs into the same iCloud. Has me fix the phone. Restore the old one. They transfer the data. Transfers the iCloud. He logs in. Two days later, he says, it's like the phone was touching itself. I'm like, oh, maybe it's a defective screen. Not a defective screen. Turns out she erased his phone. Uh, Remotely locked the phone with a message that said, fuck you. And then disabled it. So funny enough... Now he's back to have it restored again. I'm like, if you don't know that iCloud or if she changed the iCloud, you are fucked. There's nothing you can do. Right. Go to Apple with your purchase receipt. Oh, I didn't buy it. She bought it. Then it's her phone. Go buy your own. Make a new account. There's nothing else you can do. And no, there's people who are going to tell you they can remove the iCloud. Most of the time, they'll bypass the iCloud. Don't log in. Can't do a lot of shit to it. And still, it costs you like three, 400 bucks in a week of time. If it's that much to you, go buy another phone. That's my whole point to these people. It's too hard. It's it's just to for them to understand that is a nightmare. Right. So the whippets. Where where were you going with that story? Oh, so um, that that reminded me when I was in New York, we had this call and it was to some kind of uh, like it was a rehab uh, apartment complex. They were like, yeah, you know, this guy he's just not responding in his room, and like they know he's in there. Yeah. The manager saw him go in there. And, like, he'd knock, and he would just not respond. So we get there, and two firefighters, two new, uh, two Syracuse firefighters were, were knocking at the door, and the guy was like, no, no, no. He's like, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to see you guys. Like, I just fuck off. And, like, we showed up, and they were like, yeah, you know, he's just not acting right. And I was... Being a little crazy, loopy. Yeah, I was going through, like, all my differential diagnosis of like well you know what could it be talking to my partner so we're like knock on the door and he opens it like a crack and he's like who is it and it's like hey you know it's like ems just want to make sure you're doing fine the manager here told us that something was going up he's like no i'm fine shuts the door and then all of a sudden we just hear a <laughs> right so what happened when he <laughs> and went silent Oh, nothing. Like, his door was locked. We couldn't do a thing. And he finally came to, and we are like, hey, you know, just let us, you know, check your vitals, make sure everything's fine. And he's like, he opens his door a little bit, and then the firefighter puts his boot in there. And Forces his way in. Yeah. I mean, because, like, this guy, he, like, he's still... Co- to himself. Yeah, still come into it, so he's, like, altered. So we're like, all right, so, you know, let us in. We're coming in now. And then he locked himself in the bathroom and then does the same thing. Just another, and then he's out, and I can't remember specific. He 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 ended up walking out of the bathroom and then just sitting in the bed, and we're like, "All right, man, just let us take your vitals, make sure everything's okay. Hopefully, try and convince him to go to the hospital." And like during us taking his vital, he's starting to come to, starting to be like alert and oriented. He's, you know, so so at that point, once we've 
are done with his vitals, we can't do anything because he's in a right state of mind yeah. and he's refusing to go. And we're like, all right, you know, since you're okay now and not altered, let's get uh, a refusal. Yeah. And I tell my I tell my partners like, hey, you know, you can start taking the, the stuff back to the ambulance. And I turn around and I grab my iPad and all of a sudden I hear... And then he lays on the bed, and I'm like, oh, "Does fuck. he have the fucking can of whippets there? Did you see it?" Oh, this, hold on, man. It gets even better. <laughs> oh, no yeah, it gets even better. And I'm like, oh, firefighters are walking down the hallway, and I'm like, "Hey guys, like, come back here. I just don't want to deal with this anymore. So let's get him strapped into a stair chair and just take him. Take him, yeah, because he's unconscious 50, right now. Fifty. Yeah. Yeah, three and, days old. You're sobering up, bud. Yeah. And, you know, he starts coming back, too, and we have him in the chair, like, hey, man, you know, we're going to take you to the hospital because, you know, something's up. And, again, like, I I turn – this guy's a magician with the Whippet cans because we take them away. So far, we've taken three away from this guy. Yeah. And then we have him in the stair chair and strapped onto it. Are these the small cans? These are, like, the – like, this size cans. Okay. And – Again, I turn around to grab my stuff, and the firefighters are, you know, buckling him in, and my partner's doing something else. And again, out of nowhere, out of thin air, just hear a, and then he's he's passed out in the stair chair, like as we're about to leave to take him to the hospital. Luckily, he stayed unconscious for like the duration of us getting him on the stretcher. But I'll tell you what, Chris, like we get to the ambulance and the in the like apartment manager mm-hmm. guy, he went through his room, and found like i shit you not it was a big fucking trash can you know like the big ones you use for yeah. leaves in your house it was practically that big full full of whippet cans they come in packs of like 25 and 50 and i remember i had a roommate andrew he was going through a depressed time where his dad wanted him to be a stir he wanted to be a twitch streamer in like early 2014 before twitch was big and he was like, oh, I'm going to start streaming, start streaming gameplay and stuff. We used to call him Milk Dud, and then his gamer tag was something else. He had so many, like, lofty goals. He had his dad buy him this $5,000 computer as, like, a business loan to this business of being a streamer. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. So he spent all his days fucking streaming, you know, shit, going to work three, four hours, and then coming back doing this shit. And all of a sudden, I would see these cans everywhere. And I was like, oh, what's this? Didn't know what whoopets were at the time. And then I was like, okay, there's balloons. So they would crack and fill up these fucking balloons, and you would just in one go. So I would hear that all night long, and I'm like, dude, what is that? Let me try some. So I tried it. We got a box. He didn't have any money, so I went and bought them from the fucking, like, smoke shop. So we bought them from the smoke shop with two balloons, got them in the house. I did it twice, and I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm done. Like, I, I have done, let me just tell you. I have done some very lofty drugs from some very unfathomable places that you would not want to take drugs from. And still, I will never do a whip it again in my life. Yeah, no. The, it's just, the, it's the taste and the reaction to the body and the lightheadedness and the almost like you feel like oxygen's gone out of your body immediately. There's no fucking reason to do that. That is like, I'd rather huff paint. I'd huff paint. Yeah, that's what I would do. He knows what the cost is. Uh, we got a kid who comes in every couple of days and sells us something turns i asked him today i was like are you going to kill yourself i need to know is this one of those things where you get rid of everything you own because even down to the hard drive the usb connection the cables that he needs for his tv he's selling me Mm -hmm. usually people don't do that they only do that when they're going to do something stupid so i asked these people to get their reaction if he was not so like no it's good if he was like oh what do you mean you know i'd never do that they tend to fight it a little more when they're depressed. Like, I could never. Uh, most people will turn it into a joke when they're not serious. But no, he was fine. It's just one of those things I have to ask because I hate that. They will literally sell and pawn whatever they can for as cheap as possible because it's a no questions asked thing. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, you'll just take my shit. And then I can go and buy X, Y, and Z for it. Cool. Wondering why he's so down on money that he's got to sell his fucking Xbox Series S. Right. Because what does an Xbox Series S right now cost? Three twenty nine at Walmart. I can buy them used for two seventy nine refurbished. Come on, where's the rest of these? One seventy nine refurbished. So that means he will get forty five bucks for it. I'll sell it for 
two seventy here. But that's the the mode of buying new shit because I'll have to clean it, and then he doesn't have an actual uh, controller with it, so he's got like some aftermarket controller. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll buy it for forty five bucks, and bada bing, bada boom. As long as it works, so people love that for their uh, their media management at home, like to hook up to their TV. I'm a fan of the uh, the wireless Alexa, the Alexa Cube, because I have two kids that like telling it to change when it's their turn. So my son, who's three, is like. Alexa, turn on YouTube. So, boom, YouTube turns on. He's like, Alexa, down. Alexa, right. He's three. Alexa, select. Boom, it turns on whatever he wants. Then he knows how to navigate the phone, which is, it's getting harder and harder to let that kid stay on the phone all day. Mm -hmm. It's just, he's going to be here and his eyes are going to be all like fucked up. Like, you wear glasses, glasses? Yeah. Uh, They're prescription? Yeah. How bad is your prescription? bad in like two seven so i've got a a stigmatism in my left eye that makes it like a little crooked which is weird Mm -hmm. so i can't see things like super far away anymore like my sharpshooter days yeah it was 40 out of 40 you want to say something but it was a definitely a crazy time we're going to get this iv out and then we're going to get the day started at 4 p.m um if you enjoyed like comment subscribe what do you think it's that easy it's free you don't have to give us any money unless you want to there may be a link down below Don't donate. Yeah, donations are great. Stop by 1008 10th Street. Yeah, well, anything we get in this podcast, though, you know, he's in on. So I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Later. Life can be super happy, life can be super sad I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad I go back to my future just to get to my past But knowing me, my DeLorean will probably crash